Hi there and welcome back to James Bond in the making. This week we're going to be talking miniatures uh, and I've got a couple of trees here on the table. Um, one's about this high, the other one's about this high. So um, stay tuned and I'll tell you all about them. But never believe what you see on film because they're not as big as you think they are. So today we're talking miniatures. Um, I've got these miniature trees here from the film GoldenEye. Uh, this one's about 25 centimeters high. This one's about eight centimeters high. And what they would do in the film uh, was use a thing called forced perspective. Now they would put the, the big trees at the front, the smaller trees at the back, and that would make it look like the set is a much deeper or much longer uh, thing that it is. Now the set, was about 30 to 40 feet long and um, but in reality you think it's probably 30 to 40 kilometers long uh, right in the distance to the mountains. Derek Meddings the uh, genius behind all the miniature work on Goldeneye and many other Bond films before that um, Derek actually started work in the 60s working on films like um, Thunderbirds and uh, then went on to his first James Bond film after being hired by uh, Broccoli and Saltzman. And uh, he was hired for Live and Let Die, uh, where he did his first work and went on right up until Goldeneye. Uh, Derek sadly passed away just after filming uh, Goldeneye. And, uh, but these miniatures are a legacy to the amazing work that he did on the Bond films. So these trees are used in the Seven Iron satellite station scenes um, a lot of um, scenes with a lot of flyovers uh, mountain work a big satellite dish and um, uh, planes and explosions and uh, who would have thought that was all miniatures Derek Meddings and his team uh, spent six day weeks working for months on these miniature sets and uh, these trees would have been stuck into styrofoam one by one and um, making sure that they got the perspective right and making sure that it was believable that it was a full size set. Um, then they would go round and then they would uh, sprinkle flour on everything to make it look like snow and cat litter. Uh, cat litter obviously being more like a lumpy kind of snow, the flower being a fine powdery snow made the effect amazing. Uh, after a couple of days I did hear uh, that it did start when it because it was getting damp over overnight it did start to smell a little bit, the cat litter started to smell, the flower started to go a bit rancid so um, the smell wasn't exactly the best on, on these miniature set but uh, a fantastic um, thing all the same. Uh, I have another miniature here which was also from the film Goldeneye. Uh, this is a miniature pilot which was used in the MiG uh, aeroplanes. Um, I'll be doing a separate vlog about this and the miniature plane work which was um, you know all to do with uh, miniature flying uh, models um, so I'll be doing that later just wanted to show you also uh, a great miniature from the film Goldeneye. Filming was uh, done in an old Rolls Royce factory in Leavesden. Um, Eon took that over and made it into Goldeneye HQ and it's now Leavesden Film Studios and um, Pierce Brosnan uh, found it was great because he said Leavesden Studios was a new era 
uh, and the new start. And uh, there were no ghosts of past bonds uh, in the corridors. Um, and he wouldn't have people walking past him, nudging each other, going, that's the new bond, that's the new bond. So this was just a little bit of information about the miniature work on the James Bond films. Um, these are just a couple of the miniatures that I have in the collection uh, and I thought that might interest you uh, to know how they uh, go about filming these things. Uh, so if you like these things, subscribe down below, stay tuned and I'll see you next time.